needed to cut some wood today so I headed down to the farm and I'm about ready to get in the woods with a tractor and do a little cutting but in the meantime I went to visit my uncle and that lives down here and uh, sitting there and he put out some pulled out some knives that his son my cousin makes and uh, I had heard that he makes knives uh, but my uncle bought some of the knives from him and to give as as Christmas gifts and he gave me my knife today and and look at this that is armadillo tail now I had heard that he makes uh, knives with the handles some of them being made from armadillo tail and I thought eh, I just don't know about that but I tell you this is really something it is really neat it's nothing what what I thought or I imagined it really turned out nice I love this knife so it might be my new favorite and uh, and it fits good in the hand it's not going to slip because of these grooves and the layers it's just really nice and he makes them out of these files and uh, really turned out good so very pleased all right I'm about ready to head down the woods so I will see you there all right <music> One saw down, one to go. Then I do a little maintenance. As you can see, the chain came off. Got uh, quite a bit of wood cut, actually. I'm cutting them in longer chunks to just for the drive home. It's about a two hour drive home. And uh, that way when I get home, I can saw them up to the right lengths there. So it's going pretty good. Well, I'm getting close to my last load. You can see it here in the bucket of the tractor. I thought I'd sit down, take a little break. I've been working pretty hard. I love being out in the woods and uh, running a chainsaw and cutting wood. And it's very peaceful. Not that uh, even in the midst of chaos and uh, whatever's going on around me I have peace because I have Jesus in me he said peace I leave with you my peace I give to you and and I have his peace and so it doesn't really matter what I'm doing but I just I man I love it out here for sure it's Christmas time and I've been thinking a lot about Jesus birth and his coming and uh God's plan, the mystery 
of God's plan, the mystery of God, his great mystery. He is a mystery. You know, I think about him and, and we will never exhaust being in awe of who he is, beholding his beauty. You know, that Psalm 27 where King David was writing that, that I would behold the beauty of the Lord, meditate in his temple. I know of men and women that have had throne room experiences, not very many, that I believe. Uh, there's one or two, three or four that I believe has actually had a throne room experience where they're standing before God. I don't know what sliver of him he allowed them to see, but they have beheld just a portion, just a, a mere glimpse, sliver of some portion of who he is. Because if they were to see him in all of his glory, they'd be dead. And uh, I've never have. And so, I, and King David, uh, you know, I don't know the extent of his encounters and experiences with David, or I'm sorry, but with God. But for him to write that, to behold your beauty, and I've thought about that. I thought, God, I want to, you know, I want to see, I want to, I want to see, behold your beauty. But what I'm, what I have come to understand that, oh, to see him, you know, to see him, I can't even imagine. I've, I've had just glimpses of, I, one time I had a vision, dream, vision, I don't know what, where I saw a portal in the sky and it opened up and uh, the, the colors that were coming out of that portal were, can't be described. So I've seen portions of the heavenly realm, but that's not God. God is God, and He is so much higher than anything in His creation. And so when I read that about beholding your beauty, O Lord, to behold your beauty, where, where I have beheld His beauty is in His characteristics, in His nature. You know, the scripture that says that He will never leave us or forsake us. That's His characteristic, and that's His nature. He will never forsake you. He will never leave you. His spirit dwells in us that have surrendered their life to Christ and made him Lord of their lives. But to behold his beauty, his characteristics, his nature, to taste of the Lord and see that he's good. I've tasted of the Lord and he's good. His, his characteristics and his nature is beautiful. I'm in awe of him. When Jesus said to love your enemies, what other leader in history has ever said that? Jesus is the only one, love your enemies. And he not only said it, he did it. While hanging on the cross, he asked the Father to forgive them, the very ones that nailed him to the cross and spit upon him and, and, and wove the crown of thorns and so on. He not only spoke about it, he lived it, he did it. And so those characteristics in his nature, you know, Jesus is the exact representation of God the Father. And uh, to behold his beauty, the beauty of the Lord, his love for us, the way he's pursued our hearts, the way he's pursued me when I did not deserve it. He is his mercy, the multitude of his mercies, his long suffering in my life the way he kept coming after me and kept coming and kept coming and kept coming. He wouldn't let me go to behold the beauty of the Lord. He's beautiful. His characteristics are beautiful. His nature is beautiful. He dwells in unapproachable light, the word says. He wraps himself in light as with a garment. Every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights. He is light and there is no darkness in him at all. Ah, uh, he's good. So I'm in love with him. I am in awe of him. The awe of him is in my heart. May it never leave. All right. 
Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. May he give you grace and peace and abundance. In Jesus' name.